Um, hello, everyone. I'm Malika. I'm a senior at Aspen Abbey School. And this is Sophia, who will introduce herself in a second. And we were working with Dr. Castellal and Dr. Akamada for the last six weeks on creating a data set of reels for the winter reel focus class. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Sophia Canada, and I'm the director of the at Super Session. And to start with, we're going to be talking about um, uh, rice grinding and rice grinding. And basically, for a particular uh, So, what is kind of rice grinding? Well, kind of an astronomy is the study of how a solar cell objects change over time. And these type of objects are called transients. Um, in this image, we can see the, that the, um, there was an image taken of a galaxy uh, a few months back. And then in the new image, in the second image, we can see that the new image was taken in the same place, but with a few changes. And then in the last in the last uh, picture, we can see the subtraction of it of both the first original and the, the new uh, picture taken of the galaxy. And we can see how the changes have um, progressed and developed over the few uh, the few um, um, just I guess a few amount of time between those images. Uh, here, like. Our focus in this project is to see galaxy and celestial objects in the infrared. And here we can see uh, of an image that we're going to be projecting, and as well as the similarity between the optical wavelengths. Um, so, to start with, we're gonna, our project focuses on winter, which is um, it's also known as a wide field infrared transient explorer. And what, what is it? Well, it's a time domain survey instrument on a one year telescope at a Palomar Observatory in California. Uh, it was implemented, implemented in mid 2021, and it has been designed to observe astronomical transients in the infrared spectrum. Um, so, as I mentioned, what could this be? Well, it could be as these pictures could be many things, but we're going to go. What we are going to be focusing on would be um, active galaxy nuclei or AGNs, variable stars, and supernovae. And we're going to explain what they what these are in a minute. Um, so, active galaxy nuclei or AGNs are extremely numerous new, regions found at the center of some galaxies. They are powered by black holes, and they are powered by black holes at their center that will in in and heat up gas and dust, and this makes them shine for a longer period of time. And for the sake of this presentation, there, we're just going to present four certain four types of AGNs, although there are many more uh, in, the, in the universe that we are aware of. Um, so the first the first uh, AGN would be cyclic galaxies, which are extremely bright centers due to their active supermassive black holes. Radio galaxies, which emit strong radio waves from powerful and black hole particles. Quasars, which are galaxies filled by enormous surrounding black holes, producing high energy jets in various directions. And quasars, which are, which are just subtypes of quasars and very catalysts from, from the tall stars. Another transient would be variable stars. And variable stars are obviously stars whose brightness changes over time. And there are two main types of variable stars. And extrinsic variables and intrinsic variables. Extrinsic variables are stars whose brightness changes due to their absolute outside factors, such as the eclipsing binary, which are in the image in the image on top, uh, where one star blocks light and meaning from the other, and the other one will be intrinsic variable to this star that changes due to, their, to the characteristics of the star itself. Such as those same variables, which you can see in the picture on the bottom. And then finally, supernovae, which are basically explosions of different massive stars, which can often then lead to black holes. Uh, there are two main types as well of supernovae. The first one would be called type 1 supernovae, which is a white dwarf that 
often um, accumulates too much matter in the lower steps of the system, uh, which often causes an explosion. And then lastly, the type 2 supernovae, which is a big star, uh, often runs out of fuel and collapses, uh, often resulting in neutron stars uh, and neutron stars and black holes. Now, I'll pass it on to Monica to explain our, pro our, our problem and our solution for our problem. Uh, thank you, Sophia. <clears throat> so, Winter is a relatively new telescope, and it has all of these wonderful source um, detections, and it has a massive catalog of these uh, cutouts. So, we can use this image subtraction that Sophia showed us earlier to find transients and classify them as different objects. But, image subtraction is complicated and sometimes it generates false transients and sources. With so many sources, it is difficult to sit down and sift through all of them manually. Um, we're talking really several hundred thousand millions of sources. Most of them don't even have any in them. So the solution is a machine learning model built to classify these sources as real or bogus. The real bogus classification model can be trained with sample data sets of reals and boguses to be able to determine what each source actually did. Prior to the summer, this model's data set had a lot of bogus samples, but not very many real samples. This imbalance prevents it from being accurate. So for the last six weeks, we have been going through all of the winter data to make a data set of real sources to train the real bogus model. So how do we actually get there? The first step is to acquire the winter data, and luckily, this was already done for us. The telescope takes images pretty much every day. Then we had to read these source files and get the coordinates, which we could then use to cross-match to other catalogs and analyze those cross-matches to figure out what's real and bogus. Then we would be able to train a machine learning algorithm that would be able to detect, detect these reals on its own. So this is kind of like a good timeline of where we are, and now we can kind of go into each of these steps in more detail. So first we have to get the data. Uh, winter basically takes a bunch of images every day. There's not a catalog with lots of different information about this detection. And the cutouts look like this, and I have a wonderful long PDF of a bunch of these. It is kind of obnoxious. <laughs> so then we were so we were able to get the coordinates for all of these points, which is really important because it's really the only way we can figure out where they are. We can kind of classify them. And so first we uh, plotted them and we cross matched them to other catalogs. So what is cross matching? you might ask. Cross-matching is really just identifying objects that have the same coordinates but are in different catalogs. So we used AstroPy and MatPlotlib to work with astronomical data, plot the data, and cross-match. So to figure out what was real and what wasn't, we were able to cross-match winter data with CTF data. CTF is the Swiss Transient Facility uh, that had is an optical survey of the northern sky at region that's similarly to winter, except winter is in the infrared. However, if a source in winter shares coordinates with a source in ETF, there is a high chance that they're both detecting the same source, so they're probably real. So this holds a lot of importance because we know that the stars in or the sources, the sightings in CTF have more data, more information, and it'll be easier to figure out whether they are actually real. So, for simplicity's sake, let's look at one night of data. This uh, was the night of June 15, 2024, and Winter had 32,000 sources. So, that kind of shows how many sources we're dealing with, because this is just one night of data. We cross matched it to CTF and got 400 cross matches. And so, here is the metadata for this cross match, which gives us what the source in winter was, what the source in CTF was, and the file that holds those green and yellow cutouts we saw earlier, as well as the coordinates. And of these 400 um, cross matches, we determined that 332 are stars, 
three are nuclear, <coughs> 14 are offset for the galaxy, and 14 are hostless. And hostless just usually means that the point is so bright that it is, we can't detect the galaxy that it's near, probably because the galaxy is really faint or far away. And 37 were not classified. And so, you know, we have this little pie chart. Clearly, stars are pretty common. No surprise there. So let's look at some of the subtractions. So this is a subtraction of a star that was actually really good. On the top, we see the winter subtraction, and on the bottom is the CTS subtraction. So in the middle is the original picture that was taken a while ago, and the one on the left is the most recent, the one that was taken on the night of June 15th. Then on the right, you have the difference. And so we can see that just based on the similarities, um, between winter and CTS, we can say, yeah, this is probably a real star. And we went into Aladdin, which is an all sky atlas, which you can kind of search through the entire sky through, and you can look at different points through the lenses of different um, telescopes. And so I actually have a lot of fun looking through Aladdin. It's, it's really cool. You should look it up. Um, and we found the same star in the Tumas. The telescope and the stars, which is optical, do not be temporary. And so all of these surveys do show that there is a star at this point, but it's probably real. This is a bad uh, uh, subtraction. It's a bad subtraction. You can see in the winter there's really like some strange things going on there. It's hard, even if this was classified as a star, it's hard to feed. Um, a machine learning classifier, something like this, and say, okay, this is real. Uh, that just is not very effective. So, as well as just figuring out what those cross matches are and what kinds of objects those cross matches are, we also need to take out the bad cutouts. So, back here, this is kind of where we're at right now. We've completed the data or running this code on one. Night of data, which I downloaded from the winter computer onto my own um, workspace on the Noir Labs data lab. But now we are moving the Python script to the winter computer itself, and it's actually running right now. Uh, it'll take a few days to get through all of the uh, data if it doesn't crash. And then we can move on to training this algorithm. and having it find these reels on its own because it's really a pain to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're really excited for what's next to come with winter because it is a very good telescope. Thank you. Other questions? How big is the winter data set? Um so this probably got several hundred thousand sources in it right now. Uh, like I said, this one night of June 15 had 32,000 detections. That's just one night and has about 400 nights of data right now. Um, it is kind of uh, varying depending on the night. Some nights have very little data, especially at the beginning. And right now, winter isn't, I don't think it's sending back any data because they kind of like reconstructed the entire thing for another thing. That's, and that was also a fire problem. But, anyways. <laughs> um, and with that data set, is, it, is all of your machine learning processing being run on the computer? Or are you like outsourcing to the cloud? Or how are you? I have not actually interacted with the algorithm yet. That was written by uh, one of Professor Nassimal's students last year. Um, but we could, and they tried to run their preliminary data set on it, and they didn't get very good results from it. So our job right now is to, to finish getting the data set and then go to the feed. Yes. So um, we're comparing against ZTF, and we're looking at the ZTF cutout images the one there. ZTF also has its own real mode of classifier, mm -hmm. which gives a score. Yeah, so we do have. So, are you looking at the real data store as well to see if yes. you agree with that? Because, you know, machine learning can get it wrong sometimes and say something's <laughs> real as well. Yes, yes, definitely. We are looking at the ZTF real data store. Um, right now, there's a very basic 
uh, <clears throat> classification code that we I've written that just takes distance and the middle of the score and the brightness and kind of discerns what it's for. Yes. Uh, that's all in the data. From the data. Yeah, how did you repeat the question? Oh, he asked, um, how do we get the distance? So the distance is already in the data collected by Winter. How does Winter get the idea from you? It's not really flagging anything on its own, either that or it's. I don't think it's flagging anything on its own. Usually, um, or it, it does with the old um, classifier. I'm not really sure how it does, but we usually will look for and make that really interesting and discuss them kind of manually right now. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, there you could comment on the experience, what it for you this summer? Is involved in this project. Um, so my experience in astronomy uh, wasn't very like well known, uh, even even before this project. But um, after after all these weeks, several weeks, uh, I've learned a lot of stuff that I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you like if I understood it before because. It's just, it, it wasn't like abstract, like, like Python and come down, like, make it into similarities in what we've been working on and data sets and everything. I wasn't aware of, of a lot of stuff until uh, my mentor and, and uh, Malika uh, were able to guide me through. And I've learned so much uh, since then. And I really appreciate it. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of like getting more um um working like I want to work more with astronomy because it's something that I really want to develop um uh, um uh, uh, an interest in and yeah I think that's my experience so far in this program and what I've learned from it so far. Yeah. Um, to my own experience, I think it was really exciting that we got to work on a project that really does impact the rest of the winter team. Um, when I first came on, I wasn't really aware of uh, how many people work on winter and just being part of the winter team meetings and seeing all these people log in from all over the world, especially because we don't have them right now. It, it literally like kind of made it apparent to me how useful the data set and also the classifier will be once it's finished. And that's really exciting to be a part of it. So yeah. Thank you. Any other questions?